a very good morning student today i am going to tell you about the parts of a living long bone here this is the parts of a living long bone we are dealing here with a living bone long bone okay we are not dealing with any small bone but just because the long bones are very easy to understand okay and they will be dealt with here as a living long bone so i'm going to tell you about what are the parts of a living long bones when you see here these are the parts of a living bone long bones written here it consists of the sac or the body okay there is a body present in the which is called as the sac so there is a body okay see this is the diagram of the tibia which is an example of the long bone and this is the body okay centrally placed the body then there are the two ends of the second part is the ends upper end and that of the lower end then there will be the articular cartilage covering to the ends of the long bone which will come in contact with that of the other bone to form the synovial joint okay or the joint itself then the fourth part will be periosteum that is a membrane covering to the outer surface of the bone and then we will discuss after taking a section of the long bone this tibia what is endosteum which is just opposite to that of the periosteum and then in the same longitudinal section of the bone we will learn about the marrow cavity or the space or cavity cylindrical cavity which is present in the shaft or the body of the long bone and lastly we will learn about its content of the marrow cavity is called as the bone marrow so you should differentiate between marrow cavity and the bone marrow let's begin with the parts of the living long bones here if you see a living long bone say for example this is the tibia okay and this is a living long bone which is uh, i mean say this bone which is in my hand is the dry bone dead bone but we are talking of the living long bone which is present in our lower limb okay that means in the leg medial side of the leg and that bone is called as the tibia bone okay so this is the living long bone say for example the tibia bone now this tibia bone consists of yeah, the most of the part of the tibia consists of the sac or the body see this so we are on the sac so this part of the bone is called as the sac s h a f t sac or you can call it as body so this is the body part of the living long bone say sac now when you trace this sort you will see that this is made up of the compact bone okay i will tell you what is compact and what is spongy which i have already told you in the general anatomy classes okay this is made up of the compact bone and within this compact bone the inside there is a cylindrical cavity called as the bone marrow cavity so it encloses a bone marrow cavity inside okay so this is the now this shaft or the body of any long bone is called as diaphysis this is called as diaphysis so this part shaft or body is called as the diaphysis bone okay or diaphysis now if you see this uh, the terminal ends of the shaft this is towards the upper end and this is towards the lower end the expanded part of the sac which meets with the ends here this part and here this part okay this expanded part of the sac which are meeting to the ends they are called as the metaphysis so this is an another part of the body or sac which is called as metaphysis the plural will be metaphysis okay so this is the upper metaphysis and this will be the lower metaphysis metaphysis so these are the parts of the body are the sac of any living long bone or any bone okay let us come to the second part of a bone and these are the two ends this will be one end and this is an another end 
At the end, the bone is expanded because it forms the joint with the other bone. Say, for example, here is the tibia and this is the femur. So, the upper end of the tibia will form a joint with that of the lower end of the femur, what is called as the knee joint. Similarly, the lower end of the tibia will form a joint with the talus called as the ankle joint. Okay, this will be the ankle joint here. So, these are the two ends. The upper end and the lower end. Upper end is called as the proximal end. Proximal end. By this time, you must have learned this term proximal and the lower end is also called as the distal end. Distal end or the lower end. Simply, if you don't know the lower proximal and distal end, call it as the distal end and the proximal end which are expanded part okay now these ends upper or lower end they are known as epiphysis epiphysis upper epiphysis and the lower epiphysis so the ends are known as epiphysis the sac was known as diaphysis and the expanded part of the sac which was meeting with the ends were expanded in, okay, this part is called as the metaphysis. So, if I trace the parts of a long bone here, it will be the epiphysis or proximal end, it will be metaphysis, this is diaphysis, again metaphysis and again the distal end or the epiphysis, okay. This is also known as the ends are called as the epiphysis bone. So, these are the parts of the long bone for the sac and for the two ends. Let us come to the third part and that is the articular cartilage. If you see the ends of the long bone, as I said that they will form the joint with the above or proximal end and with its distal end. This joint will be formed and their ends which are coming in contact with that of the other bone to form the joint which are usually silovel in the long bone. This is called as articular cartilage. So the third part is articular cartilage. So this is the articular cartilage and as I said in the last video also this articular cartilage are hyaline cartilage. They are the hyaline cartilage in nature. Same is here, this is also covered by the articular, they are called as articular cartilage because they form the joint or they come in contact with the proximal or other distal bone to form the joint. That's why they form the articular, they are known as the articular cartilage. Now this articular cartilage which is covering to the smooth area which comes in contact with the other bone which is called as articular surfaces. Articular surfaces of the long bones at the ends they are smooth because they are covered by the articular cartilage. This articular cartilage is not as hard or I would say hard as that of the bone because bone says the calcium deposits and the cartilage are resilient. That means there is some in sponginess is I mean say some I mean to say softness is there that's not completely hard as that of the bone which have shows the calcium or mineral deposition there is no mineral deposition in the cartilage so cartilages which are present at the ends of the long bone they act as a cushion or the sac absorber they act as a cushion and sac absorber so the cartilage functions which will be, I will say, I will be telling you when I will be coming you, coming to the joint description, okay, joint description. Let us go to the fourth part of a bone and the fourth part of a bone is the periosteum and periosteum is a fibrous membrane and this covers the, all the parts of the bone which are not covered by the articular cartilage. I hope that you are seeing this color. The green color. This is a membranous periosteum, is a membranous structure and it covers all the parts of the bone which are not covered by the articular cartilage. Okay. If suppose I draw this in a cross section, this periosteum, okay, 
if suppose I have taken a mid uh, section from the mid portion of the tibia, this is the compact bone of the sac here, then this periosteum will be curving like this all around, all around this is the periosteum. What is periosteum? In living condition, the periosteum is a membrane and this membrane of the periosteum has two layers. An outer layer is made up of the collagen fibers. The bundles of collagen fibers here, if I draw the microscopic or uh, this histological structure of periosteum, it is made up of two layers, outer fibrous layer which is made up of the collagen fiber as it is called as the fibrous layer and within this fibrous layer you will see the presence of the cells and these are the fibroblast cells hence it is a membrane like structure on the inner aspect of this there is a presence of a cellular layer where the cells are present on the inner aspect embedded in this fibrous layer okay and this cell they are said to be the cells resting cells similar to the fibroblast but they are have the capability to form the bone forming cell which is called an osteoprogenitor cells osteoprogenitor cells means the cells which are capable to form the bone that means the cells which are in the cellular layer the second layer of periosteum is cellular because it is made up of the cells and cellular layer first is fibrous outer and inner is cellular layer and this have the capability to form the bone forming cells say for example osteoblasts okay osteo which are the bone forming so this is the example i will say histological structure of the periosteum now then we come to just know what are the functions of this periosteum? The first important function of this membrane which is covering all the parts of the bone except the part which is covered by advanced by the articular cartilage or hyaline cartilage. So this fibrous membrane, uh, it gives the shape to the bone. It is protective in nature, see. So the shape is decided by because it forms the outer limiting membrane, okay. It is in, Thus it gives the say. Now this contains since the bone forming cell which I said the osteoprogenitor cells are there in this uh, uh, inner membrane, okay, cellular layer of this. So they are capable to form the bone. That means whatsoever bone is forming deep to this periosteum, it is let down by this cellular layer, okay. They convert into osteoblast and then they form the circumference okay the bone grows in circumference by the formation of the bone from the osteoprogenitor cell or the bone forming cell of the cellular layer of the periosteum then this periosteum is supplied by the blood vessel lot of the blood vessels they go inside the periosteum and supply the blood so this blood vessel are called as the periosteal blood vessel and they also supply the blood to the outer surface of the bone. So this helps in supply, supply of the blood not only to the periosteum but to the circumference after peripheral part of the bone as seen in this cross section. Then this periosteum is very sensitive to pain because they are covered, I mean so they are innervated or supplied by the nerves, sensory nerves and this is the reason that since sensory nerves are supplying to that of the periosteum which are also going inside the bone that's why any fracture in the bone is very painful okay those who must have got the fracture of any bone they must have felt the pain that it is very painful because periosteum is sensitive to that of the pain now this also provides the attachment the surface of the periosteum provides the attachment to the capsule of the joint okay when one bone comes in contact with the other it is attached with the help of the articular capsule okay then they provide the attachment to the ligaments which are the structure which binds the 
two ends of the bones which are forming a joint which are called as the ligament you must have got the sprain in the ligaments okay so, which is also a painful condition so it is not only giving attachment to the capsule but also to that of the ligaments of the joint then the surface of the bone they provide the attachment to that of the muscles not only the muscle fibers which are taking origin from the surface of the bone but then the tendon of the muscle is also attached here for example here in this rough area there is attachment of a very strong tendon called as the ligamentum patelli okay so that is below, below your kneecap okay that is attached here in this area so this provides both region as well as insertion to the muscle okay to that of the muscle of the so in this way the bone is uh, providing the origin insertion and attachment to the ligaments as well as to that of the tendon okay this also will provide the attachment and certain of the bones with that of the deep fascia is attached or the intermuscular septum is attached to that of the bone okay to that of the bone intermuscular septum you will learn when you will go to the in general anatomy classes about the muscles okay about the muscle if you already not covered it okay already not covered so this was an another part of the bone a long bone living long bone we are talking of we are not talking of the dry bone or dead bone okay so imagine a living bone only we go to the fifth of part of the bone that is endosteum the periosteum and inside it is covered by the endosteum now for showing you the endosteum i will have to cut a longitudinal section of this bone suppose we cut a longitudinal section of this bone so you will see that this will be the compact bone forming the sept that this is from the other side this area this is a compact bone which forms the sac and compact bone is the bone which is like ivory doesn't show any spaces on observation of the naked eye and this is compact so this is a which encloses a cylindrical space in the sac so this is that hmm, space here that is called as the marrow space okay that is called as the marrow space or the marrow cavity and this is that compact bone is there so we were talking about the endosteum when we see the ends of this long bone we will see that from this end compact bone okay there will come out the many plates spicules bony trabeculae and they plates and rods they will enter an osteomos with each other to enclose the large spaces in it at both the ends and this part of the bone which is not compact but it is the anastomosis of the rods and plates and thus forms a uh, space spaces multiple spaces these are called as the spongy bone so these ends are broad because they are having inside spongy bone not the compact bone no so i was talking to you about the endosteum endosteum is a covering inner covering a very thin unicellular simple epithelial covering from inside the bone marrow cavity is covered by a single layer of epithelial lining and this epithelium is usually the squamous or flat epithelium but you should know that this epithelial lining which is from inside not only covers the marrow cavity here it is not only covering to this marrow cavity of the sac but this is also covering to the surface of those spongy bones okay so that this cavities of the spongy bone they are also covered by the endosteum what is endosteum endosteum is nothing but a cellular membranous structure when i say the cellular that means it is not membranous as we have seen in two sense the periosteum but it is if you see the in large view this is a flat epithelium simple epithelial lining okay and this simple epithelial lining is resting on the minimal connective tissue this is the structure of the endosteum 
while on the other hand the periosteum was a fibrous layer very tough and a cellular layer osteoprosnator of course the cells which are lining the endosteum which are single epithelial lining and mostly the flat cells and it is the epithelial flat cells are uh, you see the squamous cell they are also osteoprogenitor in nature osteoprogenitor when i say that it means that they are also capable to form the bone forming cell when the need will arise so this is the end of that means no area of the bone which is inner aspect is unless i mean say it is not bare always it is covered by the endosteum as we have seen the outer area was covered by the periosteum let's come to the sixth part of a living long bone and sixth part of a living long bone is the marrow cavity you see this cylindrical cavity marrow and since this cylindrical cavity is here which is surrounded by this compact bone here all around this provide the compressive strength to the bone you can put the load on to the bone which will be easily passed from its proximal end to that of the distal end similarly this compact bone will also responsible for sustaining or just bearing various other kind of stresses say for example shear stress bending stress okay so not only compressive the other stresses they are also registered by this compact bone and this is more i mean to say effective when this is in the form of a pipe okay in form of a tunnel is there inside it okay surrounded by that it will be more if it would have been it is much more effective as a stress resisting structure sap uh, if it would have been a solid structure it would easily break but since it is cylindrical structure containing a cavity it is more i mean say resist the forces it resists the forces more effectively so there is a marrow cavity is here so this cavity is called as marrow cavity the marrow cavity is not only present in the cylindrical sac but also this spaces this spaces are also called as the marrow spaces in the spongy bone in the spine which is also covered by the endothelium or you would say and osteum lastly if we come to the last part of a living long bone it is bone marrow when a child is born the whole of the marrow cavity whether it is of the sac or that of the ends spongy bone marrow cavity this is all completely filled with the red bone marrow and a red bone marrow is responsible for 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 the formation of the blood cell but as the age progresses this red marrow of the sac which is in the cavity it is replaced by the yellow bone marrow except at the ends okay which remains the uh, filled with that spongy bone filled with that of the red marrow okay red marrow so the red marrow which gives origin to the blood cells they remain throughout the life at the ends of a long bone but cylindrical part of the long bone becomes yellow which consists mostly the adipose or the fat cells but where it is the red bone marrow beside this adipose it also contains the cells which are involved in the formation of the various kind of the blood cells okay so thus in summary i can say that a living long bone is a living structure which has many parts it has a sac or body it has proximal and distal end okay and the proximal and distal end they are called as epiphyses the sac is called as the diaphysis and expanded part of the sac at both the ends is called as the metaphysis then there is an articular cartilage at the end then there is a periosteum inside is endosteum and the cavity which is present narrow cavity is filled with the bone marrow which is a bone forming tissue inside the body thank you very much for this video on the parts of a living long bone